wait, but we haven't asked them if they want to do that. It's okay. We can just check it. And then you sign underneath saying yes. Yeah, but do we really want to do that if that we don't know that they're... We, just we can do it. If they refuse to do it, then we'll do whatever we have to do. Yeah, we still have to ask. We still have to do this. I just want to be sure. Yes. I think it's. I just want to be sure that, on some level, we have a chance to look at this thing before they submit it. Because, yeah. I'm so, just not. So you are the. So this is saying to serve as a municipal authorizing official for the grants electronic application and reporting system. So on gears, they're asking for a name. Right. And I think that's you. You're that not, they're not going to ask you to fill out the grant and right. apply for no, it. No, no, no. I don't think so. I think that's And to fine. execute the grant agreement and other such documents as maybe. So that's that's just pressing the button. Yeah. Yes. That's what I and then your name 3B is the alternate. And the alternate Same is... Um, yeah, 3B. Yeah, so if something happened to you, they could say... Bill, would you yeah. please? Or I'm, yeah, off on a motorcycle trip or, or yeah. whatever. Right. So who are you going to put in 3C? And then Sarah, Sarah. is hereby designated as a grant administrator, the okay. person with the overall right. administrative so responsibility. Peter, Peter Phil, Phil, Sarah. 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 Yeah. Okay. And then I do say we check the box yeah. on the back. Yep. Well, this is the thing. Are we really making her responsible for the program activities? Like, or are we just saying this on paper? I think we're saying it on paper. You know, because she's not going to be like, "Have you measured the sidewalk no. yet? Have you contacted no. so and so yet?" No, no. But she's going to. I'm just reading that. the resolution you guys What's had from place? last year, which was a resolution to apply for a municipal planning grant for the Vermont Department of Housing. Blah blah blah, acknowledging that if granted, the town will be responsible for a 10 percent match of funds, which may be in kind contributions. The motion See, that passed. doesn't even end that. Right. Uh, afterward, the board discussed whether to check the box on the resolution permitting the Regional Planning Commission to act as agent for administering the grant. The box was checked pending further clarification for the potential grantor regarding the town's control if the Regional Planning Commission assumed this responsibility. Let's just pass the same one, shall we? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Here Let's we just are. do here that. Because <laughs> don't they say in here somewhere or... It's the same. Yeah. Must adopt a resolution. Yeah. So, well, should we can just... Steve moved and Phil seconded. Do you want to keep it the same dynamic? Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Sure. Wait, this it? is like the same exact date. Yeah. Yes, it's the exact same date. <laughs> except for the year. Yeah, except last year we didn't have a town plan. And it was wow. on Tuesday. Today's Tuesday. Today's Tuesday. Yeah, we can't sign this because it's a different date. No, no, no. Oh, we're just going to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But that, we're going to do that instead of this thing. <laughs> yes, I like that. See, it's always good to oh, have But one. we don't have to do this? And we're the no, audience we're going to ignore it. it. <laughs> Are you it sure says we can? somewhere it says or similar. This says 2019 municipal planning grant. No, we have for, oh, I have the, I have this grant. You guys are going to check that box and you're going to sign this tonight after you pass that motion. But that's going to be the resolution. This is going to be the resolution. Correct. Yes. You're going to sign that Not you're this. Going to, but yes, we just need to sign this in order to submit this by September 30th so they can get this they can be eligible. For this. So I go we by signing the bottom yeah. of this, we signed sign our resolution. No, this is from 2008. No, I am just using the wording from last year. We're going to put that in the minutes. And then this is the resolution that you sign right here. Right here. This is okay, the grant. Just if you need to have us come back to sign because we've done some No, you're, no. you're going to it's right here. We need to sign. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we just need I'll to change it. the names. Yes. So it's Peter, Phil, and Sarah. But we still need to change the names, is my question. Okay, yes. so I'm just going to put this in. So 3A, 3A oh, put this 3A out. is Peter. Uh, 3B is Phil. Yeah. Yep. And you're on 3C. 3C. Okay, so do you guys want to, uh, do you want to pass this motion? Do you want to? I, I moved already and Phil seconded. So we're ready yeah, to vote. Yeah. We're ready to vote. Okay, should you want me to include the same wording? Okay, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Still, okay, Steve. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Done. Now you can Passed. sign. Unanimously. Now we can sign. Did, did Mary call? That was tough. She's nope. going to call it. Okay. okay. Oh. Should I check off this box? Go mm -hmm. ahead. And I'm also going to put in this minutes the same thing that we are going to, depending on what that what that means to check out that box. Yeah. Isn't it weird we had the exact same concerns out? That's 
so funny. Mm -hmm. It just makes you wonder what you do with your life, right? You know, is it what happened in the last 365 days? Oh. Okay, considering the DeWolf bids to conduct an engineering study of the town garage and possibly the town hall, action likely. I, of course, have forgotten that we asked Paul to do this. So our faithful clerk slash select board assistant reminded me. I think it's, I think it's a good thing to do for the town garage. I'm not sure it's worthwhile for this building. Why would we need an engineering study on this building? We might need an architect to work on this building, but that was probably an architect. I don't know that. Well, <laughs> I guess my thing would be only if we decided that there was going to be the clerk upstairs here someday and we had to move the vault and you had to do something with that. Right. Or, I mean, I, I don't think, nobody has ever suggested to me that there was any structural, I mean, there's deficiencies in this building. No, I don't think it's not going to collapse. No. And there's an open question as to whether we're going to continue to use this building or not. So. But isn't the point of this study so that we can present to the voters if we decide that we don't want to be in this building that we've done our due diligence as to why we think there's a new building needed but but i think that's an architect who does that an engineer is going to okay. say the roof isn't going to collapse the foundation isn't going to crumble so we still so, want to have somebody come and look at it at some point yes whether we want to do it now and and the next and the next phase of this business with the town garage i think is to get an architect involved you know we're going to determine the feasibility and cost to improve that existing building. That's an engineering function in my mind, or mostly an engineering function. Um, yeah. Do we know, Steve, if we have, we must have a file somewhere that has the plans and specs for that building? Somewhere, hopefully, maybe, possibly. Because that's going to make a huge difference in this engineering study, because otherwise they're going to have to do a complete analysis of what the structure of that building was. Well, And to the extent it's a pre-engineered building, I'm sure we received all, I mean, I know it was a long time ago. I can put Marika on it, but they're probably there around here someplace. Yeah. Does that company still make? Morton? Yeah. Buildings? I think they do. I think so. I'm not sure. I yeah. think, yeah. I believe so. So the specs, as a pre-engineered building, they probably still have the specs for the well, building. Well, they probably do. When push comes to shove, yeah. we have them. But yeah. I mean, to have them start digging into the walls and figuring oh. out what the structure is, that's what's going to make this expensive. Yeah. Whereas we can give them and say, so many pounds per square foot, here's right. what a ba 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 That makes their job a hell of a lot easier. True. And... Hello? Hi, this is Mary Skinner. I'm sorry I'm late. Hi, Mary. So... Lunch with the newlywed. Oh, that's important business. So... It is important business. Well, congratulations to you and to them. Thank you. So how far on the agenda have you gotten? So, uh, Mike Pelcher is not here, and we reapproved or approved the municipal resolution for the planning grant we changed we changed the names around we made it mm -hmm. peter phil and sarah instead of uh the suggested names which were the same names we had the last time we did this Perfect. we, we want to make sure we have control so mm -hmm. we have, we have just started talking about item three which is the dewolf bids to conduct an engineering study uh and we we're just talking about it, but from my point of view, there's no reason to do an engineering study on the uh, town hall. We have no reason to believe that there's any deficiency in the structure. There may be deficiency in the functionality of the town hall and clerk's office, but it's not an engineering 
issue. It's an architect's right. issue. So what, what I'm suggesting or thinking about is that we go ahead with the uh, proposal at the town garage, which is an engineering study, but the question I was asking is I'm hoping that somewhere, either down at the garage or here in the office, we have a file from when we bought that building because I'm sure that will have a lot of structural information in it, which will so dramatically... So the question is whether we do a... Is the question whether we do a real engineering one or just a visual inspection? No, they no. can't do a visual inspection. They're, I think they offer that as an alternative. They did on one they of them. They do. I think that was the town hall they offered. I mean, to do a to do a structural analysis of that of that garage to determine if it can support additional insulation, et cetera, et cetera, they've got to know what the structure is of that garage. And to do it, if we can't find the specs, they're going to have to cut away portions of the wall and do whatever they have to do to figure out what the structure of that building is, and that's going to be expensive. I'm just okay. I'm just hoping. I mean, we need to do whatever we need to do. But I'm hoping yeah. if we can find a file that says, yes, here's that building, and here's what the specs are, that they can go in there and do a, a simpler, easier, less expensive job of doing their analysis. Well, their estimate was like 22 to 2800, right? Yes. Yes. And so I thought they offered a visual one, which was like $1,000 less, but maybe that was for the town hall. But I think it yeah, was. It's on, it's on the garage. It's on the garage. Oh, that's it right on this thing. This, yeah. this is the only thing that's the garage is on the only thing on this, I believe. No, there are two things. No, two. One's for the garage and one's for the here oh. with the losses. Oh. Yeah, on this one though. Okay. You can just give that to Peter and look at it. Oh yeah. But what you're saying is it makes more sense to do the whole thing and it may be less expensive by the fact that we could come up with some of the stuff they'd be looking for. Yes. Correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Because you know, and this this is only this is only an estimate. This says what their rates are. So if they need to spend less time, it's money that we can save. That's all I'm suggesting. That's I think that's a great idea. But it also means they can spend more money, right? <laughs> well, yeah, they're not doing a visual on the town hall. I mean, the visual the visual won't won't really do us any good. I mean, the, yeah. you know, they're going to say it's a pre-engineered building, as and it is what it is. It is what it is. It isn't collapsing, yeah. but. Can it support the weight of additional insulation? Who knows? So, you know, my recommendation is my recommendation is that we go ahead with the study on the on the garage, not the town hall, and that we uh, try and get whatever information we have here to give to them. And if we can't find the information here, to reach out to Morton, who is the manufacturer of that building, and say we have a, you know whatever it is, so many feet by so many feet, whatever year building, can you tell us what the structural specs are of that building or send us a spec sheet? Well, that makes a lot of sense. So. Perfect. Thanks for bringing me up to date. That's where we, that's where we are. And we haven't heard from anybody else, just Peter so far. Okay. So I don't know if others are agreeing with that approach. I mean, I guess as yeah. long as we do something. I mean, as far as well, we're going to yeah, do the whole the thing. I mean, whatever it is, we're going to yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm on board with that. I think yeah. it sounds like a yeah. And I agree. So I think it sounds like everybody agrees. So is someone willing to make a motion? So moved. Is there a second? All second. All in favor of the motion to... Uh, hire DeWolf Engineering to do a study of the... Town Garage, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Yeah, Morton is. Well, can I just ask you one quick question on the parking? Has there been a problem with parking because of the use of the uh, of the of the Camp Mead property on Sunday? You know, to for these events. So, that that comes from Mary, not the not the bread festival that started with a conversation when I ran into uh, Mike I forget where I ran into him and I just said you know we had a little discussion at the select board meeting about controlling parking for future events and you know hearkening back to the festival they had last year where there were cars parked from uh, 
you know, one side of the village to the other and people walking in the street after dark and all that. And he said, yes, I agree, and we should do that. So that's all this is, is just a follow-up on that discussion. But he's not here tonight. Mm -hmm. okay. So I don't, I don't see that as an emergency, but if they're going to continue right. to have mega events there, which it sounds like they plan to, yeah. um, you know, as I said to him, whether you... You know whether you rent a, a cornfield and have a shuttle bus, or you know I don't I don't know what, what but uh, it's definitely dangerous after dark when there are people walking in the street and cars parked on both sides and they're you know the whole thing. So anyway, well, at least we should have some agreement with sticks and stuff in places like that. Well, that's. In well, that's, you know, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly right, but that's, that's for them to do. That's for them. Right. You know, not for, not for us to do. But, I mean, he had, he right. had some ideas about it. They, they, they shared, he was very good. He, he shared the concern. I mean, the last thing they want is somebody to get hurt, believe me. Right. So, anyway, the last thing I want to do is adopt some kind of an ordinance that's going to create more problems than it solves. If we can work it out in a collaborative well, way, it would be a lot better. It's a, it's a state road, so the question is how enforceable it is anyway. Right, correct. I just, I, yeah, but it isn't, it isn't just the state road. I mean, you know, they wanted to, uh, you know, park people at the town clerk's office. They want to, you know, we can't control the, the road, but we can control other things, and the way we control it is, is, is through uh, giving them a permit when they ask for one. Did they get a permit for the bridge festival? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, now, it's a permit to serve <laughs> to serve alcohol. It has nothing to do with the parking. Yeah, but we can put conditions on a permit. Right. Exactly. So anyway, another. That's that's a discussion for another day, I think. Gotcha. But that's but that's the subject. Okay. Um. So, Treasurer's Report, updates on 2018 IRS returns and other business action possible. Um, that was kind of what we had mentioned earlier, which probably is a new point at this point with the fire department. I can't hear you. Well, do, uh, why don't you bring okay. people up to so speed? So, while I was looking um, through the fire department stuff, I found where... In the fire department's tax returns, they're using the $60,000 that the town appropriates to them and using that, putting, entering it in as a gift, donation, whatever line it's on, and then using all the electrical, uh, heating, all those expenses as expenses that the department is incurring. Um, as if they're all running through their books, where my feeling is they're running through the town's books. So I didn't know how the board felt about that, um, so I wanted to mention it. And what do you propose, Belinda? Well, I'm not proposing anything. I just wanted to bring it to the board's attention to see if that was a concern or not a concern. I mean, I found it just interesting that we're both running it through a set of books and even though we don't file tax returns um, it's our, we're paying all the bills but they're entering it as if they're receiving a grant and paying the bills out of that grant. So Mary, Dorinda, Dorinda and I and actually I'm going to say it's Dorinda and I had a discussion um, about this before the meeting, and my yeah. take my take on this is that I, speaking for the town, don't really care what they file with the IRS. That's their business, and really not our concern. They're an independent entity. We we properly account for the money that we give them and the way that money is spent in our books, and that's what we need to be concerned about. And I also think that probably, and I'm not sure who actually prepares that return, but, you know, I don't think it's, I mean, Dorinda doesn't think it's being done properly. I don't think it's being done properly, but I really don't think it's our concern. 
they have to file this yearly to they maintain their regular five oh's. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's it's once for their nonprofit. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it isn't like it isn't like they're avoiding taxes or anything no. doing yeah. it this way. It doesn't affect anything. Right. Because probably well, nobody's well, ever. Just, but they're just showing where. I'm quite certain it doesn't affect us. Um, well, I, have we run that by our accountant? They're not. No, but I mean, they're calling. They're calling the money we give them a grant, right? Not a gift. Uh, but it's in well, the same it's all category. In the same I category. I could have to pull up right, the return right, right, and right. see how it. But uh, you know. As long as I mean, and, and we can certainly we can certainly talk to our accountant. But again, they're an independent organization. They are not us. And oh, I understand that, and I agree with you on that point. I just want to make sure there's no retained liability for the way they account for the money we well, give. I don't think so. No. We don't necessarily even. We happen to have a copy of their return, but we're not responsible for their return. Right. I just wanted to bring it to the board's attention right. that and that that's how the taxes were I being mean, filed. My other take on this is we've got bigger issues with the fire department than how they file their taxes. So to get in a get in a battle over that, I think would be. Uh, uh, so we're not, we're not ending up double counting, are they? The, the 60000 and then they additionally take as expenses, but they're, they're not saying it's 60000 plus all the other stuff. They're saying they take it out of the 60000 correct? That's my understanding. They're, Dorinda they're showing the, it as income in, as whatever the week uh, is approved at budget time. That's what they yeah. put in for their income in, and then they show all the expenses based on what all the bills that were paid throughout the year. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So you know what 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 we do is account for it correctly in our books from our point of view, which is our responsibility, in my view. And it's all audited, so our books are. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I just think it's just huh, another, another, uh, another fly in the ointment, but a relatively minor fly compared to the more serious issues. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I have one other thing I wanted to just bring you aware okay. of. Yep. We have um, we had somebody inquiring about their life insurance coverages and life and disability coverage and an employee an employee yeah. and um and i'm sure you guys are aware of this because you signed the agreement on it but at age 65 the benefit they re receive reduces by 35 percent of the original amount yeah and that's, at sh age typical. 70 it reduces another 15 percent so, used to be more than that. It used to be typically 50% right. at 65 okay. and like 25%. I just so. wanted to bring it to your attention because it was the same, you know, the same issue we had last year with um, health insurance. So again, as far as as far as feeling as though um, it's they're not getting the same coverage that other employees are getting. Well, I would say, so that, we I would say that is not we true We haven't with gone to back the to them, insurance. but I just want you to wait. That's kind yeah. of, before we go back, I want you to be aware of that. that is, that's standard group life insurance, insurance. Yeah. language. Yeah. Yeah. Now, okay. whether the, the more serious question would not be that, but whether, you know, we haven't changed that life insurance benefit in a long time, maybe forever. So should it be increased? It's a cheap benefit. That, that's a different question. That's a question for us when we go back to have our monthly meeting, which we haven't had in three months, um, <laughs> with a road crew to talk to them about. Well, I just wanted you to make aware of it. So yep. no, no, no. When the answer no, goes that's back. A good point. So, so do we have somebody who's? I presume we have somebody who's jumping into one of those age groups. Is that the has issue? jumped in? Yes. Right. Yep. 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 Okay. Yep. Okay. But that is very standard group mm -hmm. life insurance. 
policy. Well, you're the one to tell them, Peter, because you're their life insurance expert. Former. <laughs> Former. Emeritus. I'm just saying that no. No, no, no. I'm, I, 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 I didn't mean to sound to sound facetious. So <laughs> Steve and I owe them a visit, and that's right. something we can talk about when we. Right. All I'm saying is that people know that you know insurance. When you tell them it's typical, they'll accept it from you because they know you know insurance. I appreciate you're that. Or not. I appreciate that, Mary. Thank you. <laughs> um, anything else to bring? Uh, no, that's it. Okay, here we, here we go. Clarifying petition policy for 2020 town meeting warning articles over 250 action possible. I just need a statement so that I can give it to everybody. It just has to be consistent. You are already circulating petitions. I seem to do most. I like it the way it is. With it, they have to have a petition. Yeah, if they're over a certain amount. Every year. Yeah. Yeah. And the question is, is that 250 still the right amount? And I understand wholeheartedly that if you make it 350 or 500 or whatever That's you make what it, it will be. all those people who send in letters will immediately ask for that amount of money. Yes. So keep it at 250. I think we should keep it the same. Two, it, really, the reason that people ask for it is not for the money, but for the acknowledgement that they exist and that we as a community support them. These these nonprofits aren't doing this to make big amounts of not money. Not big amounts, but every little bit helps. Every little bit helps, all but towns. it's it's a lot of work right, for these towns to even write these right, letters and get the acknowledgments. If, that, if they get 250 written by Peter Hood or, or uh, Liz Sharp, that's a pretty nice contribution, and I don't think they should sneer right. at that amount. No, and I'm not saying they are. I'm just saying that this is really, this isn't something that a lot of nonprofits count on as a huge part of their budget. This is really about, we want people to know what we're doing, that we serve your community, and we're, we appreciate a token 250, which is fine. And that's why I think we should leave it at 250. So you leave that at mm -hmm. 250 and our policy is that over the 250 they have to have a petition. And the, comment, and the comment that I would make as somebody who has done this for years and years and years and years is I understand if you're getting a petition in the city of Montpelier and you need 600 signatures, that's daunting. To get 76 signatures in the town of Middlesex is not hard. You go to one eighth grade basketball game, you show up at the school a couple of days after school, you run into people around town, and you have them sign it, and boom, you've got the 76 signatures. Actually, so I am, that, well, what whatever I it is, but I am not for buying, over 250. but I am, for over 250, I am not buying that is this horrendous, insurmountable hurdle. If you're a little bit organized and you have your act together, it's not. Well, I'll move and that we keep the policy the same. I have that one more oh, every, every year, right? Even if they level fund it from the previous yeah. Right. Okay. But Peter and has one more I thing. I second that. So, you okay, like thank you. Things? So it has been moved and seconded. I just have a little discussion. So part of the discussion is you can bet your bippy the library is going to come back to us and say you did it for us last year, and we're going to say that was a one-time deal. Mm -hmm. No yes. more. Yes, I think we should. Okay. Right. And uh, number two, the other thing, which you've all heard me say before, is that Part of the value in doing this is when I'm down there at the school talking to people, they're asking me questions. What does CVEDC do? What does what does home health do? You know, what value do they right. bring to the community? Exactly. And you know, I have some back and forth with them. I tell them where they can where they can get additional information, and I think that brings some value. I do too. So I think especially since it seems to be that they're not doing what used to be the case, which is having a designated person stand up and discuss the program on the floor. No, they... No, they still do. Yeah, we still do that. They still do, but not automatically for everyone. It's more catch-as-catch-can. 
Well, it's more for the ones that are over 250 and on the... It's definitely for the ones yeah. over, oh, over yeah. 250 And the ones who are asking for real money. I mean, it's the Kellogg Hover Library, it's Home Health, it's, yeah. you know, the ones that are separate the articles. Centers, the senior centers, we always have the water very Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded that we do not change our policy. 250, up to 250, you can get put on the list with a letter and a report, right? Yeah, well, filling out the, the one, the 250 word statement, don't send you any yes. reports, yes. Okay. All I just need to know is just be We're not policy. changing, in other words. Okay, great. Do not change the policy. Can I ask a question? Yes. Is there, and I know you briefly touched on it at the last meeting, about having like all of these special articles other than the 250 possibly put on the Australian ballot. That came up no. in the discussion. But how about like it set a certain dollar amount, like anything over $2,500? I think what's happening here is you're allowing the 150 people that have the ability or can show up to town meeting to vote for the, these large sums of money and you're not giving the opportunity to the majority of the residents in town. And um, I mean, and I don't think it's going to do away with town meeting. I think that, but when you get up to $30,000 in a request, mm -hmm. that's a lot of money to have just, you know, a room full of people voting on. That's a good point. Yeah. So it is a good point, but we had 61 people vote to approve the town plan. That's so a different, that not you're not, it's not costing these taxpayers any money to approve a town plan. So here's what I'm scared of, Dorinda. And this is, I think, what would do in town meeting, is the next chip that's going to fall is people are going to say, yeah, so we put, we put the $20,000 library thing or whatever it is on Australian ballot. What about the town budget, which is the big bucks? Those same, that same minority who show up at town meeting are the ones who approve our budget. Who approve the budget. Yeah. And, and I, I agree with that. Um, I just think that it's, um, I hear the people when we send out these taxes, and I can already see the increases that we're putting into the budget is not supporting the town. I mean, a 2% increase is not covering the 12% increase we're going to have in health insurance this year. Right. And the buildings and the road infrastructure and all of that. And I think that um, I just, people are, I mean, the taxes are getting to a point where they're really difficult. And I think, I, and I don't disagree with anything you're saying. I think to a certain extent or, and I just go back to the schools. When's the last time any of us, myself included, went to an informational meeting about the school budget, which is where the real money is? Real so, money. you know, I'm I'm spending a few minutes looking over the report I get in the mail, and I'm either voting for it or against it. So that to me, yes, you may get more people participating in the process, but they're not really participating. They're just saying yes or no. I don't know. I, well, I'm, I just, I'm just very nervous that if we say... Okay, all this is going to be on Australian ballot. The budget is going to be well, is going to be the sorry, next just thing. Just a clarification: You, the select board, cannot say all this is going to be on. No, Australian no, 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 no. It has to be. It has to be voted on a town right. meeting and whatever. But we could put it on the we could put it on the town meeting warrant. Right, or someone could petition to put it on the town. Correct. Meeting. Right. Correct. No, it's not. It's not our decision. Right? No, it's yeah. not no, our no. decision to make. It would be a it would be a recommendation. But that that is my my fear and you know I understand but you know we change town meeting around so it's not during the day it's not I mean I sure there are people who work at night who can't come I, I'm sorry I did that same thing. <laughs> I don't the only, see this is the only guilty one um, I just and and you know 
I'm an old fogey, I know I am, but I like town meeting. I think it brings value, and I enjoy going to town meeting, and I would hate to see it go away, and I hated it when the school meeting went away. And it would go away if we put everything on yeah. an Australian ballot. Yeah. And, you know, I think that Town Meeting Solutions Committee has tried, you know, hard to uh, make sure that as many people who want to come to town meeting can, either through picking them up or through remote town meeting, which no one ever takes advantage of it. So I just, I don't buy that people have the reason that they can't come to town meeting. What I will say is that people probably are afraid to vote against it because right. they don't want their voice to be the only n naysayer right. in the room. That then, I, that then five that's people big. can call for paper ballot. Mm -hmm. It's going to make town meeting last for two days, but we can do it. <laughs> and the other good thing about the town budget being on the big nut, you're absolutely right, but that's our town. I'm talking about these special articles that are going out of town. They're going to Waterbury. They're going to Montpelier. That's where I have, I mean, it's one no, thing to support our own town, but when we're not supporting our own town, when we have so many mm. needs in town, whether, I mean, we're approving money to have a highway garage looked at. We're talking about the town hall repairs. I, I just feel that, you know, there's... Uh, it's like I, never I, ending. I know. It's never ending. And we're, it's kind of like we're sending the money out of country instead of taking care of our own people. But I would so. disagree with that because I believe that most of the services, because Middlesex is not a... It's, it's more of a residential town without a lot of services, that most of the services that we, we are supporting are ones that Middlesex residents benefit from. And the town, play, you know, the town uh, book will tell you how many residents have been served by these various programs. So you know, just because home health and hospice isn't in Middlesex doesn't mean that people from Middlesex aren't using them. And I think that that, to me, is, you know, that the, the argument is that well, it is benefiting our community. It's just not necessarily benefiting, you know, the, the and, infrastructure of and our people town. Can, and people can vote in the positive for that. But I also feel that, you know, and that's your choice, but yeah, I, I just I think like it's that... A, it's I, a challenge. If nothing else, I think you should give the people the opportunity to decide if this is what they want. And I'm just... I'm throwing that out there as a taxpayer and a resident and having to hear every time these tax bills go out or the pink slips, yeah. you know, I, I feel bad. That's why we need more business in here to help us boost our tax, yep. tax base. Well, I would, I would just say one other thing. And, you know, so much of this is beyond our control, but Certainly the school part of it is way beyond our control, and that's two-thirds of the money. And I, I agree with you that we're struggling to do what we need to do with the relatively modest increases that we've taken. And we've probably been too conservative in that regard. But, you know, if we doubled our increase and it was 4% instead of 2%, that's, that's peanuts in the way. And I, I realize it's all cumulative. Every year it goes up, 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 up. But... Every year, everything we have to pay for goes up, 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 too. But, but the real, for me, and I'm not trying to <laughs> cast the blame somewhere else, but the, but the real problem in all of this is, is the schools and that $18,000 a year per student. And I don't know. Did you guys vote on this yet? No. 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 We're in the discussion yes, phase. I just don't want to be lost. No. And maybe that's, I know the town, town Meeting Solutions Committee has, has worked on this and thought about it, and maybe it's time to, to have a joint meeting with them. I, I, I share all of, your, all of your concerns. I am just really terrified that, you know, once you, once you put all those items on, uh, on Australian ballot, it's going to be the budget next, and it's... That's going to be the end of town meeting. Well, I think we had four items over over twenty five hundred dollars. Um, yeah, so something like that. Senior center. Senior center. Um, meals on wheels. Meals on wheels. The library, library and, and CBHHH. Yes. And I would say, 
you know, and don't get me wrong. And they're all worthy causes. I'm not well, saying they're all they're delivering, not. they're all delivering yeah. service. And I realize, you know, the, the one I think that's, that's controversial more than anything else, and I have to be careful what I say because my wife's long connection to the library, but, you know, I'll be honest and say I don't use the library. Yeah. I think it's a nice thing to have, but, I mean, I either put a book on my Kindle or buy a book at the bookstore or whatever. I don't use the library. Do you put and your book on a library Kindle? The library Kindle? Do you know you can do that? Yeah. It's great. I do it all the time. I've done it once or twice. I don't do it much. I, when it's 8 or $10 or whatever it is and it's on Mary's Amazon Prime account, I do it. <laughs> it, would, it says, thank you, Mary. And I said, perfect. <laughs> but anyway, I, I, think, I think it is the right approach to uh, do what we're about to vote on tonight. Leave it the way it is for the time being. I think this concern, we've got, we've got time between now and when we put the warning together. We can talk about this some more. We can maybe have Susan Clark come in and talk to us. And we can all be we can all be thinking about this. I mean, it's it's a it's a it's a struggle. I mean, you know, they have done the t by they I mean the town Me meeting solutions committee has done everything to try and encourage people to right. uh, to come to well, town meeting. Well, this whole thing is to keep town meeting as a town meeting yeah. because it will fade away as as in many many towns. And the other the other part of it is, you know, maybe there is a way, not that this necessarily solves your problem, but I agree with you that a big part of the problem is, no matter what it is, when, you know, a pretty most of the time a pretty clear majority is in support, people are reluctant to say no. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know if there's a way to, you know, modernize, expedite, or whatever the, the paper, the division of the house thing is terrible because then people have to stand up and say no. So that's that's even worse. Um, but the paper ballot thing is just so unwieldy and time consuming, it's very difficult to, to but deal it, with. But, but if, it's a way that it is, people it is can a way. say no without yeah. feeling, yeah. because there's a lot of people that feel that way. They, well, it's hard to, it's hard to get up you know, same. stand up and say against the majority, whatever. You know, we're, we have been very fortunate, and I, I thank our lucky stars every year that, you know, we've had almost no serious conversation or discussion about our budget. If it's any discussion, it's that they want us to spend more money on the roads, which is what, what, we, what we hear. How come they can't be better? How come they can't be this? How come they can't be that? Well... It's so all okay. about the money. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So anyway, we need we need to vote on keeping our policy the same, same which is to say up to $250. You can write a letter and fill out our form. Above $250, <laughs> it's a petition and a report. Is that correct, Sarah? Am I saying that right? A petition and also fill out the form, and that doesn't matter if you level fund from the previous year. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 So we're clear on what we're doing? Mm -hmm. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? We have decided for this year. But I, uh, I think we should put on our hit list for this fall to reconsider that whole issue about if we want to do the Australian ballot thing. Invite the uh, town meeting solutions people to come in. Mm -hmm. Well, at yeah. least Susan Clark should be many more discussion on it anyway. No, no, no. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. We should also put on the agenda whether we want to undo the um, Australian ballot for the school budget. We don't. Well, have that's that we don't have we don't have that option, Mayor. That's not us. Uh, well, why can't we have a motion that we want to have it done at town meeting? To undo the motion where we, we said we'd do it by Australian ballot. No, 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 no. It's got to be the school meeting. It has to be a school. It's a school thing. So it would have to be an Australian ballot as it stands now. It would have to be an Australian ballot thing. So it would have to be, I don't even know what the petition process is in the new well, world. Well, actually, just to clarify, Mary, the voters got together in May, April at a school meeting of the Unified Union School District and voted to have the budget, vote, vote for the budget and for officers by Australian ballot. What they neglected to do 
but say that the clerk, the treasurer, and the moderator need to be elected by Australian ballot as well. They said that the school meeting, the annual school meeting, I think they were a little confused, needs to be held on town meeting day, all of which is impossible. Well, so we are having a special vote on November 5th to clarify the clerk, the treasurer, and for some reason the moderator can be voted by Australian ballot because there's no way we can hold a town meeting and a school meeting on town meeting day at the same time, especially in 2020 with a presidential primary. So um, that is where it's at that meeting that you would have to ask that a vote be taken. And in that case, because it's a unified union school district, all the towns have to agree. Right. Well, now he's at me up the other business update on the November 5th. Yeah, that <laughs> does that. <laughs> also, with the, the unified union, aren't ballots commingled? So that you, was not, not decided. That was that's not going to be decided at the November 5th. That's also thing. going to be decided November 5th. Why they're electing a moderator and they're still <laughs> saying there's going to be an annual school meeting the night before, it does not make any sense because everything, if this passes November 5th, will be by Australian ballot. But they forgot to do the commingling. So we are going to have to individually well. count the ballots until we get oh, to Oh, no. <laughs> Don't worry. It's only November 5th. Yeah. But if they pass it on November 5th, then we can commingle. I, I, I saw that, that they wanted to have the meeting on the time. How, how did they even think that? Wasn't it they wanted to have it the night before or the night well, of? I think or? the problem that they don't understand is that, the, for example, when you have an Australian ballot, it is technically a town meeting. So it's a special town right. meeting to vote for the town plan. They're getting lost in the jargon. What they really mean is they're going to have an informational meeting, not a school meeting, annual school meeting. Right. We've tried to explain that to the superintendent and it's not sinking in, but we did get a nice lunch out of it last Tuesday. So. <laughs> oh, who's Good. the superintendent? Please. Deborah, she says temporary. Acting. Oh, she's acting. acting. Okay. She's very nice. Who is, I thought it was Mary Moran from Rutland. No. No, no Deborah, oh, I can't remember her last name. Oh. Huh. From Rutland, though. From Rutland. Yeah. Does she commute up here? Oh, no, she, maybe she's from Bristol. That's right, she's from Bristol. Yes. Oh. That doesn't even work. Okay, anyway, uh, email. Um, yes, text moving right along. Let's talk about a fun subject. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I, I had a nice long conversation with Matt, whoever, um, from Tech Group, which is out of South Burlington. They had dropped a flyer off for Sarah. Um, I read it over, and it looked like they offer pretty much the same kind of things as our, our, our current provider. There's some differences in the, in the company, but um, I did call and, and talk to the guy who's kind of like the accounts manager, <clears throat> and they they have they've been around for quite a while, and for, for quite a number of years, they've been serving um, a lot of school districts and a lot of towns. Um, um, so they yeah they've got a lot of experience with with Nemrec first of all, um, and both hosted locally and cloud, um, and, and a lot of experience with towns, um, some much larger than us, some you know, smaller, he said, and all different kinds of things where some of the bigger towns have a tech person on site, um, where you know, the small ones, you know, like us, don't. It's like, you know, reboot and then, <laughs> and then call me. Um, so we talked a little bit of, of, about where we are right now in terms of what we've done uh, as far as rebuilding our infrastructure and some of the security stuff. Um, and again, they can manage things remotely. Uh, and I talked to them about email and that we've struggled a little bit with, you know, trying to upgrade the email, uh, that we need caching, but that what we really, we really didn't want to get into this Office 365 thing and the cost of that people have. Windows and Office um, installed locally on their machines, that seems to be working well. And we really didn't want to move in this other direction, and it seemed pretty costly. So, some, he, he actually suggested to me, and something I hadn't thought about before, was just simply buying email service, uh, typically from the company that you register your domain with. And that got me thinking and got back and doing some, some <coughs> research on this. So, and it's a great idea. What it, 
what I had to find out was whether or not those companies also do archiving, and they don't. Mm. So you have to go to another provider, but just for the heck of it. I went back to Network Solutions, which is the oldest registrar, um, in at least in, in this country. It was kind of like been there since the, the, the days the internet was, was invented. And if you register, I think, if you register with them, have them do oh, a sure. network, um, you can buy mailboxes from them. They're a dollar forty-two a month. Okay? So at that price, we can basically, and they provide all the spam filtering and all that stuff because they're doing it in the cloud, and then you're using whatever client, if you want to use Outlook or whatever, even if you want to use Gmail. It's just a matter of then having another client to get your email for the, the time account. Dollar forty two, you can pretty much afford to buy everybody an email address. Wouldn't it, would it end with middlesexvermont.org? Yes. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So they would host the domain. Now, right now, we have the website at Cloudfire. We do. Yeah. Okay. That's where the that's where Jared moved it to, which also is a registrar. They're two different companies, and that's where the domain is held. But that, it, it's easy to move a domain, and there's no necessary, no real reason to move the website. Uh, we could if we wanted to, but it's there. It's working fine, because Network Solutions does do, do uh, website hosting. Anyway, $1.42 a month um, with, you know, spam filtering and, you know, malicious software uh, um, filtering is pretty pretty cheap so you know in that case we wouldn't I think we would wouldn't need to have even group mailboxes even on you know some of the bigger committees and and if we want to really have archiving work it'd be great to have it broken down individually because like if you had listers uh, there's three people accessing a mailbox well you really don't know what the activity is because it could be any one of the three not to imply that the listers would do would do anything wrong but if you were if you were caught in an investigation or in, you know an argument okay an argument about property values you have no idea who generated that email um, so archiving which is the, the the big thing and one of the reasons RV wanted to um, wanted to use, I think, Office 365. What I found is that we actually, we can do our own archiving. Um, and we can do it relatively inexpensive compared to some of the others. We own a server that we have memory on, so we have server space. And we can buy, um, depend, again, depending upon number of users, but I just for the heck of the set. Okay, let's say we buy 15 mailboxes. Uh, so that costs us around 250 bucks a year for email. And we buy um, software for archiving, which would reside on our server, which then would also be backed up. That's probably a just shy of $500 to buy the software. Um, but we own it. And, you know, there's service contracts, updates, whatever. And again, it's the kind of thing that probably doesn't need a lot of updating, like Windows patching, mm -hmm. operating systems. I mean, maybe, maybe I have a yearly update or something. But um, that seems to be the most cost effective. And again, I, I looked at several different things. And if we were going to move in that direction, we'd have to do some more research and, and see. So it'd be a little, little bit of time for somebody to set it up on the server and then put in whatever all the, the, the functions are that grab Liz's email and archives it. And mm -hmm. apparently they kind of sit between the mailbox and the server. The way so. somebody explained to me is it's, it's similar to a firewall. It's a piece of software that's yeah. in the middle. But yeah. The stuff goes yeah. through and it grabs what grabs it needs. Grabs it coming and in, grabs it going out. Right. Well, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'd like, you know, again, there are cloud-based solutions, but looking at the prices, they look relatively expensive to me. Not Office 365 territory, but more than running it on your own server. I thought, well, you know, we paid to buy a new server. Right. Well, you know, we're running Nemrick on it. It's the only thing that's happening. So why not? Mm -hmm. Why not run that and and go in that direction? So that's kind of where I am with the with the email thing. I think it's you know. 
it's I think it's maybe the logical way to go for you know for an organization of our size um, and we can meet the state and federal requirements and and apparently there's even a way with this software to import um, older emails I mean it's easier with you know, for Sarah or, or Dorinda who have accounts at a domain that mm -hmm. we've used, but there are ways to what we grab those historical ones and um, have where those. Are they, in where are they now? Comcast. And they are archiving? No. But they're around. At least there, there's ways to, to grab. I mean, even, even if you erase something, Companies that run servers don't really erase those things. Right. They're sitting somewhere. Like I always <laughs> wondered, how do they find those texts that people delete and stuff? Right. They're able to get them back. Because oh, they yeah. never really delete them. Yeah. 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 So, so in other words, if I had a middlesexvermont.org email, mm -hmm. I could have it like come to my Gmail mm -hmm. address, and it would show that it's a Middlesex, mm -hmm. and then when I reply, it would be replying from the middle mm -hmm. sex then. But I wouldn't have to like open up a different nope. thing to like you could if you want my... to. You could if you want to. But I you mean, don't need to. But you, you don't, don't need to. to. Right. There's web based email, but no, you don't Yeah, yeah but you, you have to you have to pay attention which which email address you're sending it from. Right. Yeah. Because it's not gonna know unless oh, you Oh right. It. If you're creating an right. email you have to know yes. which one you're sending it to. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But if you're from, responding you're to an email that somebody may have sent you on You that. still have to tell it which one you're oh. if it no. If it so if you have have Liz at middlesexvermont.org and you get an email from Peter at middlesexvermont.org and you reply to that email, it's gonna already be in the Middlesex dot org world yeah where it gets tricky is and this is going to be the case no matter yeah. what we do is if you're composing well well not only composing but i mean i get i don't get a huge volume but i yeah. get a city stream of emails from voters constituents residents right okay I mean. so mm -hmm. they're gonna they're gonna mm -hmm. in, until we get them trained yeah that they can't send things to dakota i'm going to get incoming mail oh, on dakota yeah. And I need to respond on mm. middlesexvermont.org. Right. In the email. future, please. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But you're right. Regardless, people are going to be using our home emails because they know us, and they're just yeah. like, "Oh, FYI, I have a question about blah blah blah." Right. Yeah. Right. And, and the easiest way to get that into the archive is to then reply using the Middlesex domain. And then copies it'll be the whole the email it in. It copies the whole thing, and then yes, yeah. then and then it'll go it. into the into the archive. So. Yeah. This is this is where I'm befuddled and confused. Okay. That potentially solves the email issue. Yeah. But are we thinking, and I don't think we are right now, that we're going to move away from Ruben for everything else he does, RB Tech? Or are we? Or is well, it all part I don't of the know. same they thing? They offered to come down and meet with any of us who want to meet with them, take a look at the network, and s give us a proposal. When you say they, you're talking about the people you spoke yeah, with? Okay. Yeah, tech group. tech group. You know, and I explained to him what we had done so far, and he said, well, you know, probably your infrastructure's fine. I mean, they knew who RB right. was, and he said, we, you know, we may have some different ways of doing things than, than they do, but... You know, if stuff's good, stuff's good. As one of the things that is, it, we have to address in the near future is changing some of our computers because we're still running right. Windows 7. And he goes, he, he said, I'll, I'll tell you how many of lots of our clients are in the same situation. Sure, yeah. he, said, just, he said, they're just like you. They're in this huge scramble now, too. So much to my surprise, which I didn't think was going to happen, mm. all of a sudden... I'm working away on my computer one day, and this little window pops up, and it says, you know, you can upgrade to Windows 10. Hmm. Wow. And I clicked on it, and the computer ground away for an hour or two, and guess what? I'm on Windows 10, and nobody sent me a bill. Not yet. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I don't know. Have, what, what, what did you have before? Seven. Wow. And I was, I had, I had been led to believe that I was going to have to buy a that my computer was too old that it wouldn't be able to run Windows you know yeah. all this stuff working fine yeah I'm running Windows 10 
You want to but I heard it was October 1st. No, it's no. January 1st, I think. January 1st, I think. And it may have been ex extended a little longer because everybody went, oh! It's like when the But I was, I was, that's I was surprised. Yeah. And I don't know whether that's because of the way I originally bought that license that I paid for some upgrade thing. Maybe. I have no idea. But it right. would seem to me, if I can do that for no cost, for some cost, you should be able to do the upgrade. And it's probably a lot smaller than going out and buying a Windows 10 license. I don't know. Yeah, upgrades usually are. Right. Yeah. Um, so maybe they maybe they changed their tune and they're allowing people to upgrade from Windows 7 to Windows 10. Maybe. Which means, you know, and they had this whole big thing I had to read and it said, you know, we continue to get patches and upgrades yeah. and blah, 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 blah. blah. Oh, I'm just going to sleep. No. Right. But we need to, I, all, I'm, all I'm saying is, I think A, it makes sense to get whatever information, more information we need to make this decision on the email, and I think we need to do it soon. For okay. me, I think it's worthwhile, if for no other reason, that we've had some issues with RV Tech. We don't like their billing system. We don't like their ticket system. Um, and I don't like the fact that they're recommending a very expensive uh, email solution to us. I mean, it was like, what were they, it was going to be like $25 a month per, per user. mailbox or oh, something. Per user, it was, yeah, it was yeah. huge. But, of, but you see, you're, see, the way that Microsoft's done it is now, it, it's the whole office product. Yeah. Right, you know, you're getting they the put whole You can't just buy, you know, this. You, you know, like, it's almost like impossible to buy Windows anymore. You buy Windows, it's got, it's, it's well, got it's got yeah, yeah. All, you know, all the stuff, tons of stuff you know here you'll never use. Right, but here, yeah. but here is the question, though. So what do we use now? We use Word, obviously. Mm -hmm. We Excel. use Excel. Yeah. Uh -huh. We don't use much of anything else, do we? We use Outlook. Outlook, yeah. Oh, we do? You're, you're using Outlook for your... Yep. Okay. Yeah. But I, I mean, are we at some point going to have to update that anyway? We're going to have to update... Uh, do you know, you know which, when, which office... Version you have yeah. fairly new. It's fairly new, yeah. Well, I, I, I bet when they built that computer. Well, this one, yeah, but I don't know about that. They put one. it on there. Yeah. Um, yeah, we will. But again, usually upgrades like, are cheaper. Why does why does that make the email so expensive? Because you're not getting just the email. You're getting the whole. You're package. getting the whole. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. But why? But for everybody why else, can't we just go out? Why does? I, I guess what I'm asking is. They're proposing something where we have a group license yeah. for for Office, whatever it is, whatever version it is, right? Right. And that's what's making it expensive, is that there's a monthly charge for that license. Why can't we just go out and get the limited Office license, just like we have now, but update it? I'm not sure that any such thing really exists anymore. The way that the way they're they're trying to do this stuff, so they're forcing you to buy the whole. Yeah, yeah. I mean, eventually, what's going to happen? Even like with with um, Microsoft, um, you know, uh, Windows 10, is that they'll they'll start to move to the, to the way where the operating system has. Um, all of the office product built into it has all of the email product built it's into not gonna it. Be separate. And we're not going to sell you, we're not going to sell you anything that you're going to put on your computer and may never pay us again to upgrade for seven or eight years. We're going to sell you the use of this product on a monthly basis. Right. So and that's pay, where the, and that's pay, where the twenty five and, and that's where the twenty five right. dollars is coming from. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So it's wow. you know I mean. Um, yeah, because I think what, you know, they discovered, I mean, look how long people kept Office, or uh, not Office, but Windows XP. Exactly. You know? Right to the bitter end and a right little beyond. Right to the bitter end. Same thing is happening with 7. Right to because the bitter end. Because it works. It works. Right. <laughs> what I do every day, it works. Exactly. So I don't need any damn upgrade. No. No. And I don't want to pay for it. Well, you don't need, you don't need much to do. Well, it's their, it's their scheme to, you know. It's, it's, it's their scheme to get revenue, basically. Okay. Right. But all, but all I'm saying is, I guess what I'm saying is, if we're going to get trapped into that anyway, at some point. Some point. 
I mean, is that some point we have no idea, right? I mean, you, you would think you would think they would do this Windows 10 thing and then turn right around and do the that's what they've done in the past. Come out yeah. with the updated version of right. Office. Yeah, and I mean, they've tried that a lot with Windows 10. I mean, if you, you notice, or well, you're not running Windows 10, you probably notice. I am running that. Windows 10. Oh, that's right. So that, you know, all the Office product is built in there. And if you click on it, it'll let you use it for a little bit. But like 30 days later, it starts popping up saying, oh, you got to buy, you know, you no longer can use this. But, you know, so they, they bundle all yeah, the see, product. Yeah, see, because I'm still using, I, I've got Windows 10. Yeah. It did that. But I'm still using what, I'm sorry. <laughs> You okay? <laughs> what happened? She's going to fall. Liz is Nothing. falling asleep. I just asleep. feel like we've gotten a little bit off track. We okay. have. Yeah. We have. So uh, so let's let's get back on track. And getting back on track is, let's get them over here. Okay. Does everybody agree with that? I got in the minutes. Yes. Okay. And I don't think we need a. I don't think we need a motion no. for that. We I'll can just, just do it and try and get the answers to some of these questions. Yeah. I just want to make sure we're not going down the wrong path here. But it certainly sounds for that difference in price, it's yeah. pretty compelling not to do something like that. Okay. I will. I'm sorry, Liz. It's okay. No, it's not okay. Um. So, I'm basically around. I don't know who else would like to be. Well, I think Dorinda should definitely be. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sarah's here anyway, so she can pop I'm in. Not going anywhere. In and out, yeah. <laughs> Stop it. Okay, we're, f we're four minutes behind schedule here. Discussion of how emergency services will be provided to Middlesex in the future. Oh my god. I know it's huge. The table at? What's the word? Yeah, table. Let's table it. And we took a rate on reading, by the way, in the vault, it was 40. Okay, wait a minute. Can we just? <laughs> all I would suggest is we did we did have a discussion about trying to or considering to hire a consultant to help us with this question, and I don't think we've moved ahead on that, and I think we should. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how we determine who that who that person is. I know we discussed it before. I think Sarah, you were going to make some phone calls. I guess I missed that, but okay, I will. I think it was Stowe, right? Stowe had hired a consultant. They had done a big project. Yes, I yeah. believe they did. Yeah. And then there were a couple of names that I found that I sent to you by email. And, and how was it that we were going to present this to this nonprofit group that is well, a separate that, entity? Until we <laughs> got to see what the we gotta, solution We've got to talk is. to these people and see if it's something we want to do, but if we're going to do it, certainly we have to tell them. I mean, the, what, we, what we talked about the last time was, you know, trying to spin this in a positive way, like we're trying to help work on some of the issues that they and we are having at the fire department. Mm -hmm. Not saying this is us taking over control, but how they're going to perceive it, of course, is right. a different issue. But I, but I think anybody... I have to believe any consultant that we would want to hire is very familiar with these kind of issues and has dealt with this kind of stuff before and can give us advice on how to mm -hmm. deal with that. Can I just get some guidance here? So really, let's say we get two or three of them. What we, we really like is something almost like the DeWolf thing, saying yes. that for a certain amount, we mm -hmm. don't, we're not asking them to come here to a meeting. We just want to know what they could provide and what they could do. And and about what the, I mean, if it's, if it's forty or $50,000, I don't think we're going to be doing it. So, right. you know... Explain that we have a very small, you know, you know what to say. Right. So in other words, what, what we're going to give you at the October first meeting, which is next week, is to say, this is what these that these are some organizations. This these are some consultants. This is what they can offer. This is how much they're going to charge. Yeah, if they even have it by then. Even if they yeah. Have it. yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the fire or, or even meeting, whatever you know, promotional yeah. material they have, website, okay. you know, whatever. Yeah. Something. Just yeah. get something. Other, yeah. Something if they've got written, reports, they do not have to come in. Okay. That, you know, they've issued. Just trying to get a grasp yeah. of what you want. But I think we do want to move forward. I mean, my sense is we do want to move forward on that. Yep. Okay. Yep. Approval of September 3rd, 2019 Select Board Minutes. Is there a motion? So moved. So moved. Okay, you'll second, Mary? Sure. Phil, Phil moved. You second it. 
Okay. Okay. He's there and I'm not. That's right. <laughs> Correct. To it. Correct. Um, all in favor of approving the September 3rd, 2019 minutes, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No, we've approved them. Uh, orders are going to get signed. I haven't signed them yet, but we will. Uh, correspondence. I included in your packet a letter I received today. Well, first of all, uh, just to get one thing out of the way, I got an email from Sandy Levine saying that uh, the Village Center designation was approved yesterday by the... So everybody saw that, so the necessary... Um, grant applications can be applied for. So, and then the other one is this letter from John Rayhill. Uh, he just sent it to me for some reason, but I included in your packet. He is opposed to the idea of uh, installing a flashing speed indicator or two in Putnamville. Um, yep. And Mary, I don't know if you saw this. I could send you this email later. Uh, but basically, he's got some issues uh, that if we do that in Putnamville on uh, Route 12, although he agrees that speeding needs to be curbed there, It'll be all over the town, um, and uh, that there are other uh, other ways of, mod of moderating traffic besides using uh, garish flashing lights. Mm -hmm. We talked about okay. that. Early. Yeah, he's got some good points. Here. Yeah, yeah. So I'll raise my hand and plead guilty. I mentioned this to him. Yeah, I was wondering how he knew. I was like, no, he really Oh my God! I said. I said, get ready, because the, you know, the, the Putnamites are revved up about these signs. And he said, well, I'm going to, I, I, oh, uh, awful. I said, I just want it. He did. Yeah. Yeah. Guilty charge. And, um, and, and why I, is, I mean, is he, uh, is he a speeder through Putnamville? Is he a speeder through Putnamville? I hope he yeah, isn't. I mean, like, why does he oppose it? I think it's, he hates it's the sad. idea of the signs. He agrees that speeding is a problem. He hates the idea of the signs. I got and, he, well, he and he also, there, so. and he also, he used to, but he also makes the point that, uh, you know, how do we then say to people that we shouldn't have them in the village, that we shouldn't have them at the school, that we shouldn't have them here, there, and everywhere? Well, they can come and yeah. represent themselves. Yeah. They come and maybe I, we'll consider. I right. agree. I mean, I, I think just, that's a very is really a dangerous situation over there, much more so than yeah, I do too. The others that. Yeah, yeah, but uh, you know his right. point is probably right that people are going to say. But we haven't improved any signs. Not yet. No, no, yeah. we haven't. And we haven't. Sarah has has contacted AOT about the you borrow them signs. Oh yeah. And we haven't heard back from okay. them. I mean, I would think if we could do that and try that for a while with yeah. no cost, that would be a good I way. I saw to, also the hospital so. had these little ones, but I think was that the point that the town maybe someone were putting it on their lawn, they'd be able to have them. But the hospital has these. What look like they're just posted onto a sign that blinks that says, you know, huh. the speed limit. Um, well, so on, on Terra Street in Montpelier, smaller. they now have the small signs, but that, yeah. but that's a that's a city road. It's not a state road. No, I know. So what it's someone right, yeah. right, right, yeah, yeah. They want a certain yeah. size. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I did have some uh, conversations with um, a, a town police chief on these on signs and uh, about how he went about everything and they were expensive he ended up with two of them but he put his signs up on their post and the state the speed limit signs and then the state came back to him and made him change the sign post to a breakaway post and and then the, he, he's not very happy with that whole setup mm. and so he's he's suggesting we look at at different ways of, of controlling the speed rather than what the state wants. Well, or a, or a different way to do the sign. For instance, if we got easements, easements. from property owners and put the sign on their land, right. not in the state right away, would that get us away from permits and yeah. The state right state away is probably and, on many of their lawns. Mm -hmm. Those are they're so well, narrow there. It depends on the. It depends on the road. I mean, the state right away varies in width. Yeah, it could be halfway across. Could be halfway across their lawn. They think it's their lawn, but it's right. really yeah. state right away. Yeah. You have to check on that. But anyway, yeah. that's. But, a, I, but I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. So. So one last thing in correspondence or other discussion, I'm just going to send you. Mike just sent me an, a let a, an article from WCAX. Are you guys aware of this person who is? 
uh, slated possibly to go into the Middlesex, the treatments, men, the mental health facility down here in uh, Middlesex, uh, who is considered by the Attorney General's office to be now a risk of flight and uh, danger. He's charged with bringing a meat cleaver to oh. his, do you know this case? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's been on the nose. This is the Nepali guy, right? Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. And so I guess they're going to just, I'm just going to put get this into the record in our minutes, just say that the, the, the select board was made aware of it, and that uh, I guess they're going to hold up the uh, one bed for one more day. Um, but uh, prosecutors asked about the possibility of Gurn being allowed them to, um, oh, they said, now the Attorney General's office says Gurn poses a risk of flight and a danger to the community, and the community he's now maybe in as of tomorrow is Middlesex. Just F Which, of course, is completely contrary to our agreement. With and, that that the, uh, and that they said that the prosecutor said the, said the security is much less than the psychiatric hospital. I don't know why they just don't put them in the psychiatric hospital. Just let no bed. So, Peter, if it's, it's, against our, um, if it's against our agreement, why don't we write a letter protesting saying it's against our agreement? Why the hell not? We could, we could certainly can, do we that. certainly put the letter out there, but it's <laughs> going to be the same result. I know, but the bottom line is, at least we're saying we, you, you know, it's something to imply that's why people don't want to make deals with the state because they always renege and we're on record trying to protect the people in our community. You know, I'm just saying we got yeah, nothing to lose. I, I, you know, when I when I met with Al Gobiel, yeah, Al Gobiel, yeah, right, yeah Gobiel. Who, was, who was no longer there. Um, you know, he as much as said to me, we don't care what your damn permit says, you know, we don't <laughs> consider that we really had to get the permit anyway, and we're going to do whatever we have to do. There you go. So that's, that was pretty much I, I understand that, but I mean, I just think it's good to have people standing up for why well, you know, I, some communities don't want to have, do business with the state, because they always renege on their commitments to get in there. I'm just saying. No, I hear you. Well, I, I, I don't think it hurts to... To dig out a copy of that permit and send, I don't even know who the new person is. Doesn't matter, because Sarah will find out. <laughs> yeah. But it was the agreement that Jeb Spaulding made with us. Yes. Well, that agreement was to right. remove the facility. Yeah, well, I mean... It, yeah, they, yeah, but they gave us... wouldn't be dangerous people. Right. They gave us written assurance that they would not be dangerous people. Right. And they said they'd close it down, but we don't have to raise every single element when we're talking about putting dangerous people in there. Well, that's why I'm, that's why I brought this to your attention to see if you okay. want to respond in some way. Well, here's here's the first question. We've been told in the past that we're not allowed to know who's in there. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how can we confirm? And maybe it'll be on WCAX in the morning, in which case we'll know. But we ought to at least make some effort to find out if he's really there before we it protest. sounds like, isn't that well, what we're right, it's, it's a public record that he is, that they are considering putting him in there. So, uh, I mean, well, the Attorney General's true. office yep. has said that this is what the, their, their Attorney General's office is objecting to taking him from behind bars and putting him into that facility because he is a danger to the community, so they say. The well, then we should go on record as saying we object as well. And, you know, That's not okay. only that, but we have yeah. blah, 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 the agreement, well, you know. Yeah. Isn't this one well, of those cases... I just think we, we should stand up for small towns who don't want to do business with the state to fail in Isn't this one of those cases that... People will get a lot of that... mileage out of it. Yeah. The governor put pressure on the attorney general... Correct. ...to overrule... This was the one where the state's right. attorney dismissed the charges. Yes. Right. Yes. Because because there the, it's not winnable. Yeah. The insanity defense was being used too often and called on the Vermont Attorney General's office to evaluate the decision and the charges were refiled. Okay. okay. Right. So if the charges have been refiled... Yeah. The Attorney General's office says you should be behind bars. Yes. His lawyers are saying he just he's anything he's just a risk for suicide, and this is why they're going back and forth. So it's the same thing. But you know, I just since you're here, and since by next no, Tuesday no. this yeah. will be over, if you want to just submit a letter saying, you know, the, the select board is aware of this and just wants to note that in previous agreements that no one who is in danger should be placed in this facility, and this no one who is in danger of this community should be placed in this facility, and we are regging. Once again, reaffirming our objection to anyone who might be a danger to Why this not? community. Sure. Sure. One paragraph. In and out. Yeah. Yep. Right. Good. I'll sign it. Okay. I'll write it. Yeah, I think we should. 
Mm-hmm. I think that's good. Um, that's exciting. <laughs> Shit. <Sure. Okay. laughs> well, the rest of it was pretty boring, so I no guess other, it was exciting. No other, no other correspondence? No. You mean discussion of email was boring? <laughs> I think it was. I think it was the Microsoft. Once it got into that Microsoft, oh, God. it was really boring. Oh. Really boring. Yeah. All we wanted, to, we just wanted to work, and we wanted to be cheap. That's right. <laughs> and safe. Um, update on upcoming November fifth election. Do we I need think, we, I think we already November? did that. Yeah. Okay. And. Other business, the only thing I had on other business was an update on the radon situation, which you already alluded to. Right, but also I just want to talk to you very quickly about the meeting, since we are going to have a November 5th election, and I don't know if anybody is going to show or not. So we might have a select, you know, it's, I don't know what to do. We have, their next meeting is next Monday, that's, you know, a week, the first. A week away. And then we have a meeting on the 15th, where we've invited the fire department to attend for to present their budgets. Mm-hmm. So, and then I don't know about the fifth. So, looking at that schedule, looking at uh, when Thanksgiving is at the end of the month of November, do you want to change the October first October meeting? Do you want to switch anything around? What What do you want to do? So here's the trap we always fall into when right. we postpone a meeting. Then we end up having a meeting a week later. Mm-hmm. That's exactly where right. we are now. Right. But. I would like to. I would like to try and get back to First. our regular schedule at least for October. Okay. November. I don't know what everybody's plans are for Thanksgiving, but I'm going to be away. I'm going to be in Mexico. So. Nice. There's going to be no calling just... in for Peter for that second. Wait, meeting. the election day is the fifth. Right. So. Yes. So we can't have it then. Well, it would. I don't. I again, if nobody shows, it's no big deal. But. You know, my suggestion might be to just have one meeting in November, like November 12th. Well, but that is also going to be a long time from October 15th. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what you want to do. We can just, if we have a meeting November 5th, I can. It's, it's well, there's be, a bunch of Tuesdays in October. We could do Tuesday the 29th as well. Well, Phil, uh, Phil and I are not available for some of those because I do my bereavement group on the second and the fourth. Well, what Liz was just pointing out was she's saying that maybe we could do a meeting on the to- October 29th, Tuesday, October 29th, and then have a meeting. Uh, I don't know what you want to do. The 12th. And do, never that's again. what Mary's saying. She can't oh, do she it can't. because of bereavement, and Phil's got the Central Vermont Internet stuff. We said Thanksgiving is the week of the 26th, right? It's the last yeah. week in November. So what about the 19th? That's what it's supposed to be. It's a long way. Well, no, a I'm long saying way. the 30th. No, but that's, that's the what I'm saying is have, have the. Have it on the Have 30th you, or the 29th. So the 1st and the 30th? For, I mean, the 1st. No. The I'm just writing down the October one. 1st and 15th for October. And I, I'd say that we still go, try to go for the 1st, for the 5th and the 19th in November. What, what's on the ballot? The 5th. Well, they're to commingle the ballots. Oh, that. Treasurer, clerk, That's it. and moderator. And there's no, like, there's no money. Things. There's no money. No. And there's okay. no government voting politics. Okay. So it's just that. Like there's no it's, governor. It's really just a technical. No, 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 no. no. This is a, this is this, this is technical was an off election meeting. year. No, this is simply then, okay. this is simply to correct a technical and you, error. And you just had the voting here, so yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so let's just do it the fifth. You can have fifteen people okay. show up. Let's just yeah. do it the fifth. If they show up, they can we can send them upstairs. I think we should. Stay okay. So it's for stay with our schedule for October and November. So then. November the 19th and what's the 5th? 5th and 19th. 5th and 19th. And then what about December? December looks fine as well. Well, I'm leaving December 12th. Good. I may never come back. (laughs) (laughs) Good for you. Whoa. Uh -oh. (laughs) But aren't aren't we starting to work on the budget? So, So... Fire department in the 15th. It would be, it would be December 3rd and December 16th. Yeah. Seventeen. I actually think that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Here with Christmas. Yeah. Can you yeah. guys can you make guys manage without me on the yes. 17th? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we can. We can well, handle I think that. I'm not be there. I can we will struggle, but we can do it. <laughs> okay. okay. I don't think I'll be at the one on the seventeenth. That's okay. Yeah, I just I mean, I, I appreciate, I was one of the ones who was gone last week, so I appreciate that we deferred it this time because I wanted to be here for this. But 
try to we need to try and stick to our schedule as much as we can Okay. So it looks Stay like it. we've got three months that we can. We can always change a meeting if we need. Correct. Yeah. So Correct. Now we're going to talk about radon. Radon. Yes. Okay. Just a quick and dirty skinny of the radon is uh, I got an electric monitor because the we have to wait a while for the other test. So the radon. So just just back up and tell them what the other test is. The other test is a statewide test that you have to let sit for like six months and then you send it in to a lab and they return yeah. the results. But so the the radon reader I have now is pretty cool. Um, in the vault, it's the it's it's off the charts. It's forty. The threshold is supposed to be four at the most. So we've got ten times that in the vault. However, I've reset it and put it different spots around the room. The listers office is absolutely fine. Um, if I reset it and I put it here and I keep the windows open. I have a normal reading. If I keep the windows closed over the weekend and keep it in the office, it's over four, it's like five. So we definitely have an issue. It's just coming from the vault, which is all cinder block and just sucking up the radon. And the question is, how do you get the radon out of the vault? Let me just interrupt you for one second. So I think what's going on is it's cinder block. Radon comes from the granite yeah. in the ground. Yeah. And it's cinder block, so it's porous. Yeah. And the radon goes right through the cinder block. The vault's closed most of the time, it captures Right. Captures yeah, there's there. no air circulation so, in there. You know, I think what yeah. we need to do is find who the radon person is and get them in here. And a typical situation in a residence or, or an office building or a commercial building, um, what you do is you, you drill a four or six inch hole through the floor, mm -hmm. you put in a duct and an exhaust fan, and you suck the air up from under the foundation and shoot it outside. Yeah. And that mediates the problem. That may not work, and of course, if you're going to do it in the vault, you'd have to have some kind of fire stop in the duct or whatever you have to do. But I think, in just thinking about this, that possibly there's some coating that could be applied to the cinder block that would seal it. Who knows? But I think we need to get somebody in here who knows about this stuff and tell us what we need to do because do I don't think we should. Don't. Okay. Used to, don't anymore. Um, what are the what are the effects of having higher than um, acceptable levels of radon? Cancer. Of Lung cancer. It's like cigarettes. Smoking okay. a pack a day. Bye. So it's serious. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and it's the good news is, you know, we're in the summer now, windows open, whatever, but that's going to change pretty, that's pretty. Seven uh, years of my life, who knows what's happened. Quickly here. So we need to do this ASAP. That's have someone what I'm come in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You can order someone? I'm going to. Uh, find Make somebody, somebody. Okay. fire consultant, radon consultant. Yeah, Would that be great if they were the same? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, all unbudgeted, of course. Just to do you have a carbon to... monoxide tester in here and everything? I see that over there. I don't know. That's got to be fire and carbon monoxide. Hard I'm not too worried about carbon monoxide. We don't. It's, not it's a deadly. Yeah. I, scentless if it was bad, she'd be dead by now. Yeah, she'd be dead by now. I've covered those <laughs> cases where people just have the flu and the symptoms, they die. I don't have yep. carbon monoxide. Okay. But this is this Radon. is serious enough that we need to yep. deal with it. So. Where did you put the state one? Uh, well, we've been moving it around. We've been trying to keep okay. it uh, areas like in common rooms because if it is a real, I mean, it's a public. Can they tell you to move it around? Yeah, tell you to put it like first right ahead on the floor, and then we said no, no, no. You're supposed to put no, it. No, so yeah. 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 So now it's I think it's on my desk. Supposed to be breathing in level. I put it at my desk, which is breathing level. Yeah. 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 So it's we'll nice. In the meantime, mm -hmm. open the windows when you can. Keep the vault closed. Yeah, now hold my breath when I have to go in and file. Perfect. <laughs> you can get your you get <laughs> a yeah, resolute mask. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. We should get a, you should borrow an oxygen mask from one of the airlines. <laughs> Never did it. Well, when you go in there. Alrighty. Anyone? Any other business? So next week should be a short meeting, I'm thinking. Yes. Maybe we'll have... Unless we get on Microsoft 10 again. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, did just bring up? Did didn't we have a letter from um, Redmond? Oh crap! Thank yes. You for, oh, I forgot about yes, that. Yes, 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 yes. Jesus. God, did I did I email it to you guys? No. Yes. I did. Yes. 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 I can put this face on that. I am the one that told him because he called yeah. me. Could you refresh my memory on what it is? 
Uh, what we're talking uh, about? It's, he lives up on Notch Road, and he's so out on the class the four platform. section of oh, that. Oh, yeah. And he brought up this thing about the traffic oh, is right, increasing yes. because of the, you town know, because forest. of the town forest and mm -hmm. that type thing, and going into the possibilities of upgrading the road to a class three for a certain distance. Uh, so what I suggested to him was to start by writing a letter to the select board, mm -hmm. and then we would go. Where from is there. his house? It's at the very, it lives right when you go to the time of the trail, right there, it's up there on the hill. Remember when we were doing I our, thought that's where Sky lives. She lives with him. Yes. Oh, okay, yeah. All yeah. right, so it's 720 feet. Right. And his argument is that he's been, you know, Joe DeAnna basically has been upgrading this portion of the road. Joe's going, that's part of the issue there. I talked to Paul about it. Paul is not, not in favor of it. He's, Paul said it might be an actually better turnaround for him up there at the top. Oh, is it class? It's cla class, four, class four. Yeah. Class four. So where does it start? Where does it end at class three? Where is it? You know, down as you go down. I don't know exactly. Like where He's we a, park? Yeah, it's I think right so. Where, well, I don't know. That's where you probably where should be parking park down yeah. where they. With the sign yes, and stuff. Right. Yes, that's yeah. where we so park. So he said yeah. it's about seven hundred and twenty feet. As you can know, it's really steep. Yeah, up yeah, there. yeah. So how far? How far is it past Marilyn Hartfield House, the farm, Red Farm House? Well, well, way, way up at the top. Way up at the top. top he wants us to turn it into a class four. He wants to turn it into class three. three. Turn it yes. into class three. Yeah, but then which we would maintain it, plow it. Right. Yeah, but I think that would increase his, the chances of people parking up there, which he probably doesn't want. Well, um, you know, it's whatever. It's gonna. It's gonna. Re, we have to go through the same process as when we downgraded. Right. There's a process to go through. Public hearings and everything like that. Yeah. So the question is whether or not do you want to put him on the agenda for October first and have him come in so you consider whether to go through. Sure. This? Sure. Mm -hmm. Why not? No. I mean, she says we don't have no. much of an agenda. Well, if he, I, I mean, I so. I think we want to be careful about God not giving his request too much credibility. If he wants, to, if he wants to go through the process, he needs to go through the process. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. He can also petition. Otherwise, the board. we'll have everybody coming in to do that. He, he, I did tell him that you do need to see if he wants to do it. If he wants to, there, either the select board can initiate the process or. A resident can initiate the process by getting 73 signatures. Right. Five percent of the voters. I saw everything. Yeah. I don't want to initiate the process. So um, if you, and I said that with this discussion, which I nearly forgot about, that we just get the feel, the sense of the board, how the sense of the board would like to proceed. So that's what we're doing, getting a sense of the board. Right. I would so say if they would help Paul, then it would, I would like, worth doing. I would like, from my perspective, I would like to talk with Paul about this and, and take a, a hard look at it and then give that report to the select board. Perfect. The that other, great. my other, uh, yeah, my other situation about this is, and I'm not sure who's been doing it, but the residents up there have been upgrading that road without our permission. And I put that in the email. Yeah. And that's a problem. I mean, it is. How are they upgrading it? What are they doing? Probably just adding gravel or whatever. Or oh, it's widened. It's a lot wider than it used to be. That, <laughs> that used to be a goat path up there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it literally yeah. was a goat path. And now it's a, now it's a road, and they've they've done that, and the, I never recall that they ever asked us for permission to do that. I sent them back. There, there was a time way back, I think, when he built that house, that he talked to. I think it was way back then, when they talked yeah. about adding a little bit of gravel to the road. Yeah, but I, but I mean, here again is a but case that's where way back. you know. Yeah. Somebody gets permission to do it once, and then they think they've got carte blanche to keep, keep yeah. doing it. And you know they've done it at their expense, and probably would have given them the go ahead. But right. um, the, the fact process. of the matter is, they haven't asked, and it isn't the process. And right. We ought to set them straight on that one. Yeah. While we're... I did I, send him in the email. She did. Send him yeah. I, did. I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, I, saw that. Yeah, right. yeah. I saw that. But whether he's going to hone in on that or not, who knows? Well, I can but let's follow the process. So, yeah. so Steve, are you going to report back to the board on October first, or do you should I put that on the agenda? Um, let's. I mean, we're, he's not going to upgrade that road this year anyway. Even if it's, we decided to. Even if we decided to, okay. I, mean, right. I would say just give me until the fifteenth. Okay. All I, right. I just so, to get the so here's the other back. question I have. 
which I think is going to come up as part of this, is is that road right now close to up to class three standards? In other words, if they're approved, in it, because of my impression, and I was going to try and go over there today and I didn't get a chance, <coughs> I will go over there, but my impression the last time I went up there was that that road is basically the same all the way up the hill now. So I think it is virtually the same as the road down below right now. The only thing that I would say is I can remember going up there and like you said, it was it was a path where, I mean, you were driving up the road, you could not meet a bicycle because somebody had to get off the road. Right. So if they've added stuff to that road, then I would suggest that probably the road isn't up to standards on, you know, where, on the whole width of the road. Maybe the center of the road is whatever. I'm just saying. Who knows? But I mean, we need to take a look at that. We need to I'm take saying. a look at Cause that. Because it, it, it's, it's going to be, the issue is going to be to accept it as a class three road, they're going to have to bring it up to class three road at their expense. That's been our policy. So the question is, to what extent have they already done that with or without our permission and what additional work would be required? That's a pretty gnarly, steep yeah. section of road. So what they've got for ditches, what they've got, you know, who knows? I don't know. I'm going to go up there and take a look at it, too. I would suggest that we all do if we have a minute. Before the 15th. Before the 15th of October. Right. Sir, did you have any impression about, did you drive up or? No, I, I walked up because it says, um, that, I mean, I knew where to park and then they even have a sign there, a homemade sign that says no parking private driveway or something so that people aren't Is that no parking private driveway where he lives? Yeah, I don't know if it says exactly those words, but it's something to the effect that please don't park in this area, the parking is down below. Yeah. Okay, but I mean, that's the person who's written us the letter? I, I assume so, yeah. Okay. And I'll go up there too. And it's a little bit of a hike to get to the, I mean, it's certainly a hike to get to the trailhead from the parking, but it's really nice you should go if you like to hike. It's not hard. It's not, there's not scram, there's no scrambling at all. Yeah, I've done that before. It's an easy um, five miles out and back. Good use of our town forest. Okay. Good catch. Thanks for. Yeah, thanks, Steve. That. Sorry about that. Okay. So we've now decided that we're going to declare the meeting adjourned.